parts of a typical leaf. The diagram shows the different parts of a leaf. A leaf is green, thin and flat. Leaves are located at the nodes of a stem. Their growth stops as soon as they mature. Different shapes of the lamina are shown here on the screen. Observe the diagram carefully. A compound leaf is different from a small branch. How a compound leaf is different from a small branch can be learned from the table that is displayed here. Axillary bud is present in a compound leaf whereas it is absent in the small branch. Terminal bud is absent in the compound leaf whereas it is present in the branch. Leaflets of a compound leaf do not bear axillary buds whereas leaves of a branch bear axillary buds. Compound leaves do not occur in the axil of another leaf while branches arise at the axil of another leaf. In a compound leaf, both leaflet and branches are shed at leaf fall. In the branch, only leaves are shed. The branch persists at leaf fall. Monocot and dicot plants differ in their leaves. Differences between dicot and monocot leaf are put in tabular form displayed here. Dicot leaf is dorsiventral whereas monocot leaf is isobilateral. Petiole is generally present in dicot leaf whereas absent in the monocot leaf. Leaf base is not prominent in dicot leaf whereas the sheathing leaf base of a monocot leaf partially covers the stem. Dicot leaf has reticulate venation and monocot leaf has parallel venation. Dicot leaf has larger number of stomata on the lower surface. Stomata of monocot leaf are equally distributed on both surfaces. Internal structure of a dorsiventral leaf. The diagrammatic view of the internal structure of the leaf showing one vein in the cross section is given here. The arrows show the movement of carbon dioxide, oxygen and water into or out of the leaf. The differences between palisade cells and spongy cells are given in a tabular form. Palisade cells are tall, pillar-like and are found in the upper part of the leaf. Spongy cells are small and irregular and they are found on the lower part of the leaf. Palisade cells are closely packed whereas spongy cells are loosely packed. Palisade cells have no air spaces between whereas spongy cells have large air spaces in between. Palisade cells have more chloroplasts compared to spongy cells. Palisade cells receive more light and perform more photosynthesis, whereas spongy cells receive less light and perform less photosynthesis. Leaf modification. Different parts of the leaf are modified to perform specialized functions such as protection, food storage, climbing, photosynthesis, etc. Some of them are described here in the form of a table. Tendril. The entire leaf or one or more part of the leaflets become modified into thin wiry tendrils. It helps the plant to climb around a support. P. Glory lily, Smilax, Benognia venusta are examples of tendril. Spines. The leaf is replaced by a sharp pointed structure called spine for the purpose of defense. It protects the plant from grazing animals. Date palm, pricky poppy, agave, opuntia and barberry are examples of such spines. 
scales. The leaf becomes thin, small, papery, brownish and are rather short-lived. They are protective in function and helps in food and water storage. Ficus, corn, rhizomes and tubers are examples of plants with scales. The load. The petiole becomes flat, green and leaf-like. Lamina is greatly reduced. They help in photosynthesis. Australian acacia and Parkinson's aculeate are examples of the load. Pitcher. The whole or a part of the leaf becomes modified into pitcher. They trap and digest insects for proteins. Nepenthes and Dyscaidia are examples of plants with pitchers. Bladder. The whole or part of the leaf becomes modified into a bladder. They trap and digest insects for proteins. Bladderwort or Utrillaria are examples of bladders. Insectivorous or carnivorous plants. These plants grow in nitrogen deficient areas to fulfill the requirement of protein. They trap and digest insects to derive protein from them. A few examples of such carnivorous plants are given here in the form of a table. Pitcher plant, that is the Nepenthes. Lamina is modified into pitcher. The apex of the leaf forms the lid. The petiole of a pitcher plant is leaf-like and functions as a leaf. Bladderwort, Utricularia. The leaf is highly segmented and some segments are modified into bladder-like structures with a trap door. Venus flytrap. The leaf blade is etched with stiff hair and is divided into two parts and hinged along the midrib. When stimulated, the edges interlock and prevent the escape of the trapped insect. Phyllode of Acacia. Observe the diagram carefully. The diagrams shown here are the seedling plant showing transformation of petiole into phyllode and a twig of a mature plant showing phyllodes only. Uses of leaves. The leaves of several plants are used as food for human beings and as fodder for cattle and animals. Cabbage, lettuce, spinach, etc. are some of the examples of leaves used as vegetables. As beverage, tea leaves are used as beverage throughout the world. As medicines, belladonna and tulsi are examples of leaves used as sources of medicines. As spices, cinnamon leaf or tej patta is an example of leaves used in spices for giving flavor to food. In smoking, tobacco leaves used in making cigarettes, beedies, cigars, etc. Of course, smoking and chewing tobacco is injurious to health. As dyes, Several dyes can be from leaves, although some now are, can be produced synthetically. Henna or Mehendi, Lausonia enormis, is a traditional dyeing source for decorating palms of Indian women. As food plates, in India, traditionally meals can be served and are still served on a large size leaves of banana. Leaf cups or leaf thalis are popular in weddings and other feasts. As decoration, some plants are grown in gardens or inside the house for the beautiful leaves as ornamental plants, example, croton, coleus, etc.